Also, I didn't write an outro, but like, this is our last podcast, presumably for the year. Oh, we're not doing a Christmas special to follow this up with? Krampus? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair we enough. need to get Nutcracker done first. Yeah, Ian, nuts and crackers first. Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of the Scary Box Podcast. You like film festivals, boys? No, Nick, not film festivals. We know you've been working hard on those films, but you can stop thinking about them for a minute. More like an hour. Shut up, Peralski. I'm here for a fun Halloween special, okay? We're going to have a good time, whether you like it or not. Okay? Okay. This week, we will be exploring some of the history of the Scary Box's favorite holiday, Halloween. Buckle up, boys, because we are going on an adventure through time. Alrighty, I'm going to start reading. Thousand years ago, the Celtic festival of Samhain, which included areas of Ireland, the United Kingdom, and northern France, would celebrate their new year on November 1st, the last day of the harvest and the beginning of the dark winters, which back in the day would involve a lot of deaths. So, the Celts believed on their New Year's Eve, October 31st, the boundary of the living and the dead worlds would become blurred, and they would celebrate at the Samhain festival, welcoming the arrival of ghosts back to the earth. The Celts believe the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. Okay, this, we're starting off real strong. Sounds (laughs) incredibly fun. Imagine merging the two best, like, holidays for hanging out with friends, Halloween and New Year's, into one. That's... We should have kept that, dude. November 1st should be the start of the new year. (laughs) You know, you have winter, which is just death. (laughs) That was my favorite part about talking about 1700s history is just, oh, it's winter. Everyone's dead. (laughs) The droids build human <laughs> I tried to keep it straight. The druids build huge sacred bonfires where people would gather to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities. Guess what, Peralski? They dressed up. They wore costumes <laughs> with animal heads and skins and attempted to tell each other fortunes. These guys were so fucked up. They were just, you know, putting on weird shit and just telling each other weird shit. This is a wild time. They were hammered before the festival even started. When the celebration was over, they would bring fire from their sacred bonfire and relight their home fireplace to protect them during the coming winter. Yeah, so it's cool that the fire, they, you know, don't want to leave your home with the fire running. So they turn out the fires, they go to the party, but they get the a little piece of the burning fire and they take it home with them and relight their fireplaces at home to ward off spirits uh, that... Do you think they would get into fights of, like, who gets to light the fire oh. with the sacred fire in the fireplace? I bet kids would, like, especially, oh, like, yeah, like, two <laughs> brothers would beat the shit out of each other trying to get light I the wanna fire. I want to hold the fire! And then it just goes out. <laughs> Look, I spelt out the numbers for you, like how you're supposed to do for dialogue in a script. I do appreciate that. <laughs> In 43 AD, the Roman Empire, having conquered the majority of the Celtic territory, ended up combining festivals of Roman origin with the traditional Celtic celebration of... How do you say that again? With the traditional Celtic celebration of Samhain. Beautiful. In late October, Romans would celebrate Feralia to commemorate the passing of the dead. Another was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees, her symbol, the apple. Supposedly, this is where the origin of apple bobbing on Halloween comes from. Now we gotta jump another 600 years to May 13th, 609 AD. We were almost at a nice AD. I mean, I give it the nice. So I think we should give it a nice. 609 AD, when Pope Boniface the fourth dedicated the po- the pe- 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 
Pantheon. Oh, but is it post uh, Pope Boniface the Fourth? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was trying to make it easier. I made it worse. Sorry, I, was, I read it just wrong. It's fine. When Pope Boniface the Fourth dedicated the Pantheon in Rome in honor of all Christian martyrs, and the Catholic feast of All Martyrs Day was established. Later, Pope Gregory the Second expanded the festivals to include all saints and martyrs, and changed the date from May thirteenth. To November 1st. See, so they're kind of jumping around with their uh, dates that they want to release, you know, what October content on. Mm. <laughs> do we do a Christian <laughs> podcast next May and call it Martyrs May? <laughs> Martyrs <laughs> Mayhem? <laughs> Martin's Martyr Corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Emperor Nero type shit. <laughs> In 1000 AD, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day to honor the dead, and the belief today is that the church was attempting to replace the Celtic festival of the dead with a church-sanctioned holiday. Mm, so there's the backlash. Yeah, now, so, yeah. yeah. So now they this is why the, the Catholics kind of suck. Yeah. <laughs> All Souls Day was literally a knockoff of sewing with bonfires, parades, and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils. Wait. What? Yeah. <laughs> Those church freaks <laughs> are the ones that invented everyone dressing up for the holiday. Those guys. Doesn't it seem a little sacrilege dressing up as saints and, I don't know, the martyrs? <laughs> you know, there was that one guy in the group who was walking around with a cross and his friend group's like, yo, that's fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> the All Saints Day has another significant meaning from the Middle English word All Hallows, meaning All Saints Day, and eventually evolving to Halloween. Roll credits. Uh, cut. I'm kidding. Don't cut it, Nick. <laughs> From the traditions of dressing up and having big parties and festivals to trick-or-treating, Halloween has some long-forgotten mating rituals that we are going to go over now. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's get some alien. Not yet, Nick. Settle down. Well, I don't think people back then, I don't think people back then are dressing up as aliens. Oh, you're right. You're right. Weren't we saying they all dressed up in like animal suits? All right. All right. <laughs> all right, you guys, you're getting down and dirty, but you're in whatever 609 AD. <laughs> <laughs> What's your animal costume? <laughs> if it has to be animal, um, I have always liked the wearing of a lion head. Whoa. Yeah. For me, my animal skin and costume is inspired by Eric Carr's the fox from Kiss, so I would go as the fox. Oh, so you're a fox. <laughs> Wait, are you gonna be on the run? I can't. I could... I'm well, Actually, the thing is, I don't know if I could be a, like a fox on the run, because I'm not a fast runner. I, can, I could be a fox on the walk. I'm not giving an answer on what animal I'd want to be. Ah, uh, interesting. I feel like I'd be a squirrel. <laughs> our, our scary box conspiracy continues on. Anyway, <laughs> Halloween has some long forgotten mating rituals that we're going to go over now. Instead of the traditions like trick or treating, Dia de los Muertos and carving pumpkins that focus on death, these traditions were all about celebrating the living or perhaps making new life. Well, that sounds kind of gross. Oh, no, Prolski. Witchy girls are kind of hot. Well, duh. We stand the hex girls on this podcast. I was just saying it's kind of gross that I think Nate's setting up another game show segment. That's right, boys. Get your costumes together because we're going to a Halloween party. A sexy Halloween party. I'm going to give you fellas a list of out-of-practice rituals that you'll have to rate on a scale of one to five jack-off lanterns. How exciting that sounds to you. I'm not calling them that. Uh, Nate. You usually have some fun names for these games. I'm worried about the name of this one. What's this one called? I hope you boys are ready for Season's Breedings. Oh, no! Oh, fuck. Ritual number one. In 18th century Ireland, a matchmaking cook used to bury a ring in her mashed potatoes on Halloween night, hoping to bring true love to the lucky diner who found it. This was common at large family gatherings where multiple young women may be at the marrying age. 
It is likely that this tradition probably fell out of style around the time of the Great Potato Famine, but who knows, maybe people played things a little more high risk to get to the ring. There may have been a section from earlier that I just completely cut because it was so long, but it was basically saying that the reason Halloween spread across the United States in the later century is because of the Potato Famine. So yeah, there's a lot of connections to the Irish and Halloween, (laughs) a one jack-o'-lantern for me. Um, it's kind of lame. I'll go with one jack-o'-lantern. Ritual 2. Around the same era, in Scotland, fortune tellers would recommend that promising, eligible women with multiple suitors should gather up a hazelnut for each of them. With their hopefully small bundle of hazelnuts, they would name each after one of their love interests. Then, the woman would toss her nuts into the fire. As the legend has it, the named hazelnut that pops first, due to the heat of the flame, is the partner best for the young woman. Apparently, the best sex and deepest romance would be with the guy who nuts whose nut busts first. <laughs> Which is certainly not always the case in modern love. <laughs> Nick, do you hope you were ever written on anyone's nuts? I hope not. <laughs> Oh, you don't. It's just the. It's just the. He loves me. He loves me. Nut thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good one there, Peralski. I like this one. I'll give it like four stars. This one's fun. This one's all right. Three pumpkins. Wow. Ritual three. If nuts and potatoes aren't your cup of tea, well then how about a cup of tea? Nice. Another European Halloween themed mating ritual called for making a special signature brew. If a single woman were to have a sugary concoction containing walnuts, hazelnuts, and nutmeg grounded and boiled into a liquid syrup before bed on Halloween night, she would dream about her future husband. Regardless of what you guys rate this one, I know what seasonal drinks Starbucks should never introduce. It's like a love potion, except it's not. It's like a prediction potion. What if there were psychedelics in the nutmeg? Mm. I like this one. I'll give it a five jack-o'-lanterns. Wow. <laughs> Nick's really thinking about it. It's well, I'm th- okay, first of all, like, I don't know. Like, here's the thing I'm thinking. Wait, hold on. What, what year was, like, again, like, what time period specifically? I think at this point we're in, like, the 1800s. Overall, three three pumpkins. Ritual number four. Okay, this one also involves chestnuts, but this was more of a competitive nut hunt for parties involving multiple women seeking the same suitor. On Halloween night, females who had a crush on the same gentle sir would run out into the woods in the dark of night. The first one to find a burr-covered hazelnut or chestnut had the blessing of Mother Earth to take on the suitor. I could imagine this one getting violent, a scavenger hunt for their dreamboat's nut. I'm calling this ritual the Thirsty Games. I immediately read this and I was like, oh, Nick has an idea for a horror short film now. Yeah, it's uh, it's a fun <laughs> one. It may be greenlit. Dude, imagine someone sneaks the chestnut in their pocket and they already have it and they're just playing everyone, bro. You go to the party fun. with the twist. <laughs> I'd watch The Bachelor if they did this every season opening. Five pumpkins. Our last ritual is probably the most popular, bobbing for apples. Maybe you've played this one before at a pre-COVID Halloween party, but I guarantee you the outcome probably wasn't as life-altering as this version used to be. If a group of women were neck deep in a barrel of cold water at a Halloween party in 1600s England, it was probably to find an apple. With this rule set, the first to reemerge with an apple stuffed mouth would be the first to walk down the aisle. So, if you were looking to get married before the rest of your friends, you better know how to put that mouth to use. I was always curious about this tradition because I feel like the only thing I actually recognize it from is uh, it's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. You get wet. Well, yeah. I also feel like it's extremely unsanitary. Halloween's right around the time of year where everyone starts getting a little sick. Yeah, this one's kind of lame. I'll give it like two. Two jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, one jack-o'-lantern for me. All right, one, one jack-o'-lantern. One pumpkin. That's a different writing scale, Nick. Don't mess with me. Oh, <laughs> Walter, put your pumpkin away. (laughs) I'm not carving your pumpkin right now. (laughs) We hate carving pumpkins right now, Walter. (laughs) Warlocks, witches, and devil worship. The side of Halloween that I find most interesting is what the Christians freak out about from the pagan holiday. Well, 
I'm kind of pissed off that I can't really find any exact reason as to why the sewing holiday went straight to people screaming about devil worship and Satan. So due to my poor approach to the research and lack of general knowledge, I thought we'd view something else instead. Wait, that's my bit. I mean, why do you think we just played a game show? <laughs> Not two shows in one episode. <laughs> Put on your wizard hats and devil horns, because we are going to learn how to conjure up a demon. From the comfort of our own homes in Discord. Uh, demons can travel through uh, Discord, Nick. Uh, we just watched a movie about them traveling through Zoom. It's, it's real. Fuck. <laughs> From dabbling in dark arts for love, or maybe to sell your soul to Satan and become the spirit of vengeance, getting him or one of his minions to arrive is the task at hand. First, we must draw a circle and place a candle for Belial to the north, Lucifer to the east, Flurius to the south, and Leviathan to the west. Hey, hey, shout out Leviathan, my assigned creature of the deep. What's up, boy? Go. Good to see you again. <laughs> Levi, my boy! I'm wearing your jeans. Oh, my God. That joke did not work in the first episode. Now it really doesn't work this time. <laughs> now we must say the prayer. Lord Satan. <laughs> I don't know, guys. This whole something in a demon thing could get bad. I don't want to do that. By your grace, grant me, I pray thee, the power to conceive in my mind and to execute that wish. Wait, 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 wait. Would, would it be better if we sang it? Well, not that I know of, but maybe we could just start singing Black Sabbath instead. Are you going to finish the prayer? No, it's too long. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> then us three shall interlock hands and call upon the demon Pyman, and he will choose to communicate with one of us. Oh, I remember Hereditary. Yeah, that's uh, that was. I was seeing if Nick was gonna notice. Probably not, because look at his dumbass. Yeah, King Payman, right? I was trying to interlock. I was trying to interlock hands. Uh -oh. I don't have like mannequin hands to like pretend. I was yeah. <laughs> 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 the thundering symbols and power behind his voice may be too much for whichever of us is possessed to hear our surroundings. Supposedly, if his download doesn't start right away, one of us can prick our finger and uh, get a little drop of blood and drop it onto the candles. Not it. Payman is one of the four kings of hell. Therefore, he may be a little hard to summon, but we can start with like a lesser ranking demon if we wanted to, like maybe from hell's HR department, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we have our candles lit. Uh, Nate picked his scab to drop the blood and the candles, and we're all interlocking, standing in our our circle and Steve from HR arrives we could use a black mirror to see what he looks like scrying is an act of seeing the future through the mirror but the same method can reveal what the demon looks like wait what's the name of uh is it Richard the ghost in Nick's basement yes uh, his name's Richard yes are Richard and Steve cool? Like, there's not going to be beef between them, right? Because I know, like, you know, Richard's been around for a while. He's been your favorite if ghost anything, friend. They're going to gang up together and fuck with us, like, fuck with me or something. They're going to just start placing shit everywhere. Wait, does Steve... <laughs> lose all my keys. Is Steam from Hell HR uh, just spooky Steve from the ghost sketches? Are they the same character? Are they canon? Well, that's a ghost, not a demon, yeah. <laughs> Spooky Steve hasn't rise to Spooky Steve hasn't been able to rise to the rank yet of demon level. Yeah, Pyman He's doesn't want to talk to there. us, but Steve will answer our questions. Every time the opening chimes to whom the bell tolls starts, <laughs> a, a demon gets his horns. <laughs> so after we ask him a few questions, you know, we could be like, all right, see you, pal. Step out of the circle, blow out the candles, or some spooky wind or something will do it. Do you really think seances are that easy to end? Because, like, I don't know. I feel like like generating all that power to conjure up a demon and you just, like, kick away the <laughs> just stuff. Just be like, goodbye. You just, like, <laughs> kicked away the stuff that you set up and you're like, all right, see you later, friend. You, you, you need a ride? And call an Uber. Yeah, like there's no like you know like you know easing out of the conversation. Like imagine just kind of like just seeing Sony I haven't seen in a while, just straight. Just it still needs to be like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry guys, twelve oh five p.m. You know what that means? Everyone's got to pack it up. <laughs> there's no way to say bye to the demon. It's just like oh let's blow the salt away or like wave around on the fire. <laughs> yeah, let's blow out the candle. <laughs> I heard we were talking about uh, horror movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, 
Halloween has some major influences on uh, horror films. Well, yeah, <laughs> definitely. It does. I deleted the section earlier. Happy Halloween. Thank you, everybody, for spending Scary Boxtober, our second annual Scary Boxtober, with us. Check out all our short films and content released this month. And thank you all. Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you enjoy what we put out and what we released. Hope you have a fun time with the podcast. And I hope you have a spooky time and a wet time. If you haven't made it over to the Scary Box YouTube channel yet this spooky season, be sure to head over there, check out whatever cool short films are coming out, and stay tuned with what Nick and John have coming up next. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.